Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Army Sergeant Matt Cromer. Once the duty day is over, most soldiers unwind at home, but Katusa Private Cho and Ho shows us a soldier that finds a way to unwind in a unique way. Having a job is only one aspect of a person's life. For Private First Class K. Andre Blockman, her true passion is dancing, specifically hip hop dancing. Hip-hop allows me to be more well-rounded as a dancer, uh, especially since I'm more used to contemporary. It allows me to step outside of my comfort zone. Also, if anyone were to take a hip-hop class, I would definitely recommend you to be more open-minded and to not be so hard on yourself. Whether you have a dance background or not, the idea of the class is to have fun and learn the hip-hop dance style. Classes and events like this allow soldiers to break away from their everyday routine and find alternative sources of physical activity. Katusa Private First Class Cho In Ho, Humphreys, Korea. Hip hop dance class is held every Wednesday and Friday at the USAG Humphreys Community Activity Center. Not all ceremonies have to be like the rest. Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp takes us to one that is like none other. As their rotational deployment to the Republic of Korea draws to an end, 30 soldiers and officers of the 117th Cavalry Regiment from Fort Bragg take flight for an unusual event. After boarding a CH-47 Chinook, they depart USAG Humphreys for a mass reenlistment ceremony high atop Pinnacle 4. We got in a Chinook and went to the top of a mountain and, and got to reenlist, which made the uh, experience a lot more memorable. Uh, I wish my family would have been here, but you know that was pretty much the next best thing. That, uh, and the uniform code, military it, it was unique. It's it's going to be something that that they remember. It's not just a normal reenlistment where you, know, you, you do stand out in front of the headquarters or something along those lines. They're up on top of the world, uh, able to be reenlisted by uh, by the officers that they chose. Uh, it, it's something that they're truly going to be able to remember uh, as their career continues to progress. Reenlistment ceremonies like this are just some of the options that are available when looking to continue your Army career. Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp, Pyeongtaek, Korea. For more reenlistment options, contact your unit career counselor. Leaving your child with a babysitter can be one of the hardest things for a parent. Army Sergeant Mark Breha goes to Camp Henry, where one class is preparing future babysitters for the job. Teenagers from the USHE Daegu area fill the desks at the Area 4 Red Cross office. They come to learn how to provide the best care for your kids, no matter their age. Some people may not be familiar with how to diaper, um, how to feed a baby, making sure they hold children correctly. Even though child care can be demanding, proper training can help mitigate the stress from the best to worst case scenarios. Because at any given time, something can happen. Um, and being trained in knowing how to respond to situations, it can help save that child's life um, until the medical personnel arrive or until their parents can respond. The instruction even includes cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR training, where the students become certified in the life-saving skill. Because someone is trusting you to watch their child, their pride and joy, and that's a pretty big responsibility. Reporting from Camp Henry, Korea, I'm Army Sergeant Mark Breha. <laughs> to find out when babysitting classes are offered in your area, contact your local Red Cross office. Do you want to try something new and meet local people while in Korea? How about indulging into the world of jiu-jitsu? Army Sergeant Ricky Perez shows us an event you might like. Korean local nationals from bases all over the country look to make new friends at Camp Humphreys through the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, this is the first ever peninsula-wide BJJ open mat. Hopefully I'm looking to do more of these where I invite a bunch of the local Jiu-Jitsu schools and all the other bases. Every base on Penn has their own Jiu-Jitsu program and so I wanted to gather all of them in one place. One person tries to submit the other using the joint lock or chokehold to get them to tap out. When somebody finally submits, they slap and bump and repeat the process. After five minutes of wrestling and a one minute break, they find a different partner and start the friendly tussle all over again. I expect everybody to find new friends. You know, through jujitsu, we, we build relationships. Again, for five minutes at a time, we're trying to you know, hurt each other, but at the end, it, it's, it's all good. Army Sergeant Ricky Perez, Camp Humphreys, Korea. 
Local Koreans and people from bases around the peninsula come to USAG Humphreys for a jiu-jitsu experience. The United States military has been defending South Korea for over 60 years. Airman First Class Jordan Barons takes us to Suwon Air Base, where soldiers are learning why our presence in the area is so important. They are not given freedom or medically like all people should be. This is my story. Refugees from North Korea came to Suwon Air Base to speak about their emotional experiences and hard times they face while living in their home country. Soldiers were able to gain a new perspective on the mission they're doing in South Korea and how they're helping change the lives of people just like the ones they spoke with. It really puts a much larger emphasis on what our job is here and what we're doing here to help defend South Korea. Seeing how their lives were compared to how they are now, it really opened those eyes, opened those doors, and keep your mind open to the fact that currently making a difference. But my question to you is, um, and no matter how small a change may be, it is the difference service members are making during their time in South Korea that counts. Airman First Class Jordan Barons, Suwon Air Base, Korea. The Korean War ceased in 1953, dividing North and South Korea at the military demarcation line. There are moments in life where split decisions must be made which have a lasting outcome on the future. Army Sergeant Woodbridge Dean Bullock has the story. Call senior airman Dylan Berenger a hero and he doesn't know how to respond. I would not know because I don't classify myself as that. But listen to this hero's response to a crashed UH-60 aircraft during a fateful night in Camp Beer in Kuwait. And there's no doubt. They had a rough landing. We were off in the distance. Heard everything go silent, we knew something was wrong. Saw flames burst out, threw all the gear into the truck, and as I was hopping into the back, someone took off on me. So at that point, I decided I was just going to run to the helo rather than try to catch up to the truck. As I got there, it was upside down. The backside was in flames. I was trying to pull somebody out of the front of the helo that was upside down. They were tangled up in their seat belt. And somebody screamed out, is there anyone else left in the helo? And no one answered. So at that point, I climbed back in through the door that we pried open. I got to the back of the helo, saw no one inside, climbed out, let them know no one else was inside of the helo. And after that, we started moving people away. Lieutenant General Thomas Bergeson, 7th Air Force Commander, recounted the airman's brave actions while awarding him the airman's medal in a recent honor ceremony held at Camp Red Cloud. And though two years has passed since his daring rescue, this noble tactical air control party apprentice continues to remain humble. It makes me feel good inside to know that I was out there and able to help out when I could. Everyone who's out there should have got something like this, not just me. It was more of a group effort than just an individual. I didn't pull six people out of there, I pulled one, I helped one person. Army Sergeant Woodbridge Dean Bullock, Camp Red Cloud, South Korea. This daring rescue happened on December 21st, 2014 at Camp Barang. That was your Around the Peninsula for this week. To see these stories and others, go to the AFN Pacific website or view them through the AFN Pacific app. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. Questions about the move to Camp Humphreys? We've got you covered. Go to 8thArmy.Korea.Army.Mil slash transformation. Get a 360-degree virtual tour of housing, schools, facilities, and more. Find out about the next town hall meeting. Tour the welcome guide. Read frequently asked questions or ask your own. On your computer, smartphone, or tablet, 8thArmy.Korea.Army.Mil slash transformation. The 2nd Infantry Division Medal of Honor recipient. On February 14, 1951, during the Korean War, Sergeant First Class William S. Sitman encountered enemy fire near Chipyongni. When an enemy grenade knocked out his machine gun, his squad immediately emplaced a machine gun and Sitman remained to provide security. Suddenly, the enemy lobbed a grenade into the position. Sitman selflessly threw himself on it, absorbing the full explosion. For his extraordinary heroism, Sitman was awarded the Medal of Honor.